Well, hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend, Bradley, and today we have a radical 80s vintage tech-focused episode. We're going to be taking a look at a camera that I just got off of eBay for a very reasonable price. This particular Polaroid came out in 1981, I believe, and it was their first sonar autofocus camera. I got it for about 30 bucks shipped on eBay, and I was just curious to know is Polaroid still something that's viable in 2023? There are still Polaroid film packs being made. The Impossible Project years ago bought up Polaroid's last remaining film factory, and now they have purchased the Polaroid name and they are still producing film. I think they produce SX-70, uh, I-Type film, and Polaroid 600 film, which is what this takes. The chemicals aren't the same anymore. They don't have access to the same chemicals. So now as opposed to, I think, 90 seconds for development time, it takes 15 minutes for the pictures to develop. But I just wanted to try this out and see how it looked. I have fond memories of Polaroids. I'm old enough to remember Polaroids when I was a little kid. I tried to take a couple pictures with this already, but it was at night indoors at our Thanksgiving. Some of them kind of turned out, even with the flash, it seemed like things were kind of dark. I didn't even know if this camera was going to work when I got it because it was just untested. Nobody had actually tried to put a film pack in and see if it was going to work. It looked nice and clean and I thought I would take the risk because it was pretty cheap and it did actually eject the film. It did actually eject the pictures. The pictures did expose after a while. They're just a little dark. So now it's a pretty bright day in late November, which is a rarity in the Pacific Northwest. So I thought we'd try this out. Maybe it's going to overexpose the images. Maybe they're still going to be kind of dark, but we'll see. I'm going to walk around and try to see if I can find anything worth taking a picture of because that's another issue. This film is expensive. It's about two bucks in exposure, so you don't really want to waste it. Once you take a picture, you probably want to put it away to keep it from being exposed to too much light. You can take a picture without a flash with this camera. It has kind of a dual shutter button. There's the red part here that if you press down, the flash will go off automatically. But there is another little button here behind that main shutter button. And if you use that, it doesn't have the flash. Um, for the most part, anytime you're indoors, you're going to want the flash. Probably a lot of the times outdoors too. Not totally sure. This uses a sonar system autofocus. So it actually shoots out sound, bounces back. It's apparently best between like four and five feet. Um, I don't know. I don't know how sharp it's going to be. I don't know how well these are going to turn out, but we'll see. There are some decent kind of scuzzy alleys in Bellingham, Washington, so I'm going to try to take a picture of this one, and I want to see if the sky is going to be completely obliterated out. I have a feeling it's going to overexpose the sky, but we'll see. wall with some pretty good graffiti here. I might try taking a picture of this, see how the color comes out on the Polaroid. We shall see. Christmas Llama Yard Shop. Ah, wow, it is a yard shop. Do you mind if I try to take a Polaroid of one of them? That was an odd experience. There just happened to be some llamas out on the sidewalk. 
I only took one picture because again, you can't just snap away and I ran out of film in the middle so I had to put a new pack in and then they took them away to go do a potty break, but that was fun. <laughs> nice serendipity there. I'll show you loading the camera because I was in the middle of llama mania there, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You slide this front door open. There's a little latch on the side right there. And then you put in the film pack up, right side up. Once you close it, the dark slide ejects. Pretty simple. I'm trying to get a picture of the Waka Museum, but it looks like it's being renovated at the moment. But I think I'll still snap one anyway. All right, the last thing I want to try because I want to save some film, it's expensive, is a self-portrait. The sun is right in my face right now, but we'll see. I don't know if I can hold this camera far enough away from myself. I'm not going to use the flash, but we'll see what happens. Squinting from the sun. All right, now we just have to wait for these to develop. I'm sure some of them are probably done by now. We'll take a look at what we got. All right, so I have a little bit more information about the Polaroid Sun 660 autofocus camera. I brought notes. Produced in 1981, the distance to the subject was calculated by emitting a sonar pulse, which then was captured again. The time difference between the sent versus received pulse gave the distance measurement. The sonar emitter receiver is the big gold disc near the front of the lens. We're right there. The lens, the lens is 116 millimeter F11 single element plastic. The sonar autofocus is sharpest from four to five feet or 1.2 to 1.5 meters. The shutter is electronic, automatic speed between one, uh, one quarter of a second and one two hundredth of a second. It has an integral auto flash that works in low light and can be forced on or off by using the stepped shutter button here. And then Polaroid's light management system that darkens and lightens the exposure. There is a little slider right there that you can go to lighten or darken. I haven't tried this, I've just kept it in the middle the entire time. Anyway. Let's see how these pictures turned out. <sighs> okay. I think that went pretty well. I had a few people yelling nonsense at me as I was walking around talking to my camera. I did jaywalk right in front of a cop at one point, but other than that, I think everyone went okay. My first day shooting with the Polaroid Sun 660 camera. I'm very curious to see what some of these photos look like. I don't know if they've had enough time to develop fully. It's been pretty cold today. And I know that that can affect the development time. Remember, this new Polaroid film takes a lot longer than the old vintage Polaroid film to develop. It takes about 15 minutes. But I have some exposures here. Look at the new ones I took. <laughs> it seems like these aren't fully developed yet. It's looking like the exposures are actually pretty good though. I'm actually getting sky in the photos that I took. Um, the shadows look pretty good, pretty good contrast. I think these are turning out pretty well. I just don't think they're done. Let's see, I took one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I did six. I'll show you a little bit later, once these have fully developed, I'll give you a nice close look at these shots. But I think I'm pretty happy with this. Yeah, pretty cool. For a $30 camera that I wasn't even sure was going to work, I'm pretty happy with what I was able to get. This camera has autofocus, it has a flash, 
It shoots film that you can still buy today. Yes, the film is very expensive. And yes, your pictures are going to come out imperfect. I think that's Polaroid's new ad campaign, Perfectly Imperfect. If you enjoy the look of Polaroid film, then I think this camera is a good option. I was finding these for 30, 40, even $20 all day on eBay. You can get refurbished models. Um, I think a company called Retrospect does completely cleaned and refurbished models for somewhere around $100, kind of expensive. But if you wanna take a gamble on a camera from eBay, you might be fine. Like I said, I didn't even know if this was gonna work. I just looked for a nice clean example at a decent price. I think this is a good way to get into Polaroid photography if you want to. They do have newer models that Polaroid has put out. I think there's the i2, which is their really expensive, I think $600 model. Um, there are a couple different models that are around $100, but I'd go vintage if you just want to try it out to see if you like it. I'm thinking I may eventually want to get one of the older fancy Polaroid cameras like the SX70 or maybe the SLR680, which is probably out of my price range, but you can get those refurbished. You can still get them repaired. There's kind of a whole industry built around keeping some of these older Polaroid cameras going. I'm pretty happy with this. The Polaroid Sun 660 autofocus camera from 1981. It's over 40 years old, and I think it is still relevant in 2023.